Remember that uh, massive data breach a few months back, the one where that online store, they lost like everyone's passwords? Yeah, that was a bad one. A real wake up call for a lot of folks, I'd imagine. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, it's that kind of nightmare scenario that keeps cybersecurity experts up at night. It's why what we do is so important. Well, Ethical hacking, I mean. Right, right. Like, it's almost like having the ability to, you know, case your own house before uh, someone with bad intentions gets any ideas. That's a good way to put it. It's all about finding those weak spots before someone with uh, less than noble intentions can exploit them. Exactly. And you know what's become a real game changer for a lot of these ethical hacking pros? Let me guess. Kali Linux. You got it. Kali Linux. It's like the ultimate toolkit, you know, if you know how to use it. It's powerful stuff and surprisingly accessible, which is part of what makes it so popular. That's what we're diving into today. We've got this, uh, this awesome article from Linux Journal all about Kali Linux. They always have great articles. Right. So we're talking about, you know, what it is, why it's so popular, and some of the, the tools that it packs. Think of this as our crash course in thinking like a cybersecurity pro. Exactly. Okay, so the article starts off with, uh, you know, a solid overview of what Kali Linux IS for anyone new to this world. And just to be clear, it's not some, like, shady back alley software or anything. No, not at all. It's actually a Linux distribution specifically built on Debian. Debian. Yeah, it's another um, flavor of Linux. You can think of it like um, how Kali is a specialized operating system, you know, designed with security in mind right from the start. Interesting. I didn't realize that. Yeah, and it's also open source, which is huge. Right, open source. So it's developed collaboratively mm -hmm. and transparently. Exactly, which means anyone can contribute to its development, report bugs, you know, all that good stuff. And this isn't just some, like, random open source project either. This is, uh, Kali Linux is developed by Offensive Security. All right. Which, if I'm not mistaken, is a uh, a pretty well-respected name in the cybersecurity world. They know their stuff. Absolutely. They're the real deal. They've been around for years, you know, training and uh, arming the good guys. And, and that's a big deal because it means Kali Linux isn't just about having a bunch of tools. It's about having the right tools, mm -hmm. the ones that professionals actually use in the field. That makes sense. All pre-configured and ready to go in a standardized environment, which, believe me, is huge when you're dealing with this stuff. So it's not just about, like, having a bunch of tools scattered around. It's about having them organized, ready to go. Exactly. It's like, imagine trying to bake a cake with you know, ingredients scattered all over the kitchen yes. versus having everything measured out and ready to go in one place. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. I see what you're saying. Kali Linux is like that organized kitchen, but for security pros. Yeah. Makes the whole process more efficient and way less frustrating. So we've got the organized toolkit. What else makes Kali Linux so popular? What else are we looking at here? Well, think about it this way. Every house is different, right? You've got different locks, different windows, different security systems. Sure, sure. Cybersecurity is kind of the same way. Every system has its own quirks, you know? Yeah. Kali Linux gets that. It's incredibly customizable. So you can, like, tweak it to fit your specific needs? Exactly. You can add or remove tools, adjust settings, and uh, basically create the perfect setup for whatever security challenge you're facing. Interesting. So it's not a, a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Not at all. It's mm -hmm. more like a, here's the toolbox, now go build something amazing kind of deal. And what about this whole live USB thing? The article mentions how you can actually run Kali Linux from a USB drive. Oh, yeah. The live USB option. Oh. That's one of the things that makes Kali so versatile. You know, yeah. you're not tied to one machine. Wow. So like I could theoretically, I could run this on like any computer yeah. anywhere. Pretty much. You could literally walk into any environment, plug in your Kali Linux USB and boom, you've got a powerful security analysis station at your fingertips. That's pretty wild. It's like having a, a portable cybersecurity lab. Exactly. Mm. And that's that's hugely valuable in the real world. Let's say there's a security incident at a company. They could bring in an ethical hacker with Kali Linux, and they're good to go. No need for a complicated setup or installing software on sensitive systems or anything like that. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely starting to see why people are so excited about this. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, um, the article makes a really good point about the importance of community when it comes to Kali Linux. Oh, absolutely. The open source community, I mean. They are the backbone of Kali Linux. Awesome. Well, because it's open source, anyone can contribute to its development, right? So they report bugs, suggest improvements, that sort of thing. Which means it's constantly being updated. Yeah, like constantly. Oh, always evolving. Always. With the latest security tools and techniques, 
It's like having a global team of cybersecurity experts constantly making sure Kali Linux is at the top of its game. Wow. Okay. That's that's pretty amazing. And beyond the updates, it's also about the shared knowledge. Hmm. I mean, the Kali Linux community is full of people who are like passionate about cybersecurity from, you know, seasoned professionals to enthusiastic beginners. And they're all willing to share their knowledge, help each other out. It's really kind of great, actually. That's so important, especially in a field as complex and constantly changing as, you know, as cybersecurity. I know, right? You don't want to feel like you're like on your own trying to figure it all out. It can be overwhelming for sure. But yeah. that's that's what's so great about this community. There's a real sense of camaraderie, like having a built in support system, no matter where you are in your uh, in your cybersecurity journey. That's great. That's really cool. OK, so we've established that Kali Linux is like a big deal, right? It's kind of a big deal. Yeah, with its you know, impressive pedigree, customizable setup, and this thriving community that you're talking about. But um, but let's talk about the tools themselves. You know, we keep mentioning the tools. The fun stuff. Right. The article mentions a few uh, essential tools, and some of these names, I gotta say, some of these names sound like they're straight out of a, like a hacker movie. Oh, I know, right? They might sound intimidating at first, but once you understand what they do, it's like, well, it's like having superpowers. Okay, okay, hit me. Let's start with Nmap. Nmap is a classic. Nmap, okay. You can think of Nmap like a digital detective who uh, who specializes in mapping out networks. Okay, mapping out networks. Okay, I'm, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So it's like, what's it, what's it doing exactly? So imagine a detective, right, dusting for fingerprints at a crime scene. Okay. Nmap is kind of like that, but instead of fingerprints, it's looking for open ports and services that are running on a network. So it's basically reconnaissance for cybersecurity, right? Like gathering intel before before you make a move. That's a great way to put it. Nmap helps security professionals see what's running on a network. You know, which devices are communicating, what potential vulnerabilities might be lurking beneath the surface. It's all about getting a lay of the land before you even start, you know, thinking about testing for specific weaknesses. It's like knowing the uh, the escape routes before trying to break out of somewhere. That's one way to think about it. Yeah. And speaking of breaking out, let's talk about Metasploit. Metasploit. Okay. This one's uh, this one's a real heavyweight in the ethical hacking world. Yeah. The article describes it as a... Um as a penetration testing framework, which honestly, that sounds a bit intimidating. I'm not going to lie. Yes, definitely a mouthful. But uh, think of it this way. Imagine you're you're a movie director and you're you're planning out an action scene, right? You've got different stunts, special effects, camera angles, all that to consider. Right, right. Metasploit is kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But instead of stunts, you've got you've got exploits, payloads and all sorts of tools for uh, for simulating real world attacks, yeah. but in a controlled environment. Oh, okay. So so instead of like actually blowing things up, ethical hackers can use Metasploit to safely test how secure a system is against these mm -hmm. these different attack methods. Exactly. It's all about finding those those weak points, those vulnerabilities, so they can be patched up before someone with you know with malicious intentions can exploit them for real. So it's like it's almost like um like having a controlled demolition to see where the you know the structural weaknesses are in a building, but instead of a building, it's your your computer network. Precisely. And the great thing about Metasploit is that it's constantly being updated, yes. like constantly. New exploits are discovered, new modules are added. It's like having, um, like having a living, breathing playbook of attack strategies, yeah. but used for good instead of, you know, evil. I like it. Okay, that makes sense. Now, onto a tool with a name that sounds a little less Hollywood and a little more medieval. You must be talking about John the Ripper. That's the one, John the Ripper. <laughs> I have to admit that name kind of threw me off a bit. What uh what exactly IS John the Ripper and what does it do? So John the Ripper it's a uh, it's actually a password cracker. A classic in the cybersecurity world. Password cracker. Okay. But how does it actually work? I mean is it just like randomly trying passwords until it gets one right? That's a common misconception. It's a little more clever than that actually. You see most systems they don't store your actual password in plain text. That would be a, a a huge security risk. So instead, they store something called a hash. Okay, pause. Hash. Hash. Yeah. <laughs> it's um. Okay. Imagine, imagine trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle by only looking at the shapes of the pieces, not the picture on the front. 
That's kind of what cracking a hash is like. Right. Every password creates the unique hash. And John the Ripper, it, it tries to figure out which password creates that specific hash. So instead of trying to like guess the actual password, it's trying to recreate the, the puzzle piece, so to speak, that, uh, that fits that specific password lock. Exactly. It takes time and oh. computing power for sure. Right. But with enough tries, John the Ripper can often crack these hashes and, and reveal the original password. That's uh that's both impressive and and a little terrifying at the same time to be honest with you. Yeah, it really highlights why having a strong unique password for every single account is so incredibly important these okay. days. A strong unique password. It's like having a super complicated jigsaw puzzle that would take John the Ripper, you know, ages to solve. Right. Makes your accounts much more secure. So we've talked about tools that, you know, map networks, simulate attacks, even crack passwords, which that's a lot to process. Um, the article does mention that there are different ways to actually get your hands on Kali Linux. Right. It's surprisingly accessible, which yeah. is, like I said, part of what makes it so popular. So walk me through the options here. Okay. So the most dedicated option, right, is to install Kali Linux as your main operating system. So that means it's, it's the only operating system running on your computer. So that's for the... Uh for the truly committed cybersecurity enthusiast. Pretty much. It's great if you're, you know, really serious about diving deep into cybersecurity. Yeah. But it might not be the best choice for, like, your everyday computer where you just want to check email and, and browse the web and things like that. Right. Yeah, I can, I can see how that might get a little complicated. What about some other options? So for most beginners, the article, and I would agree with this, the article recommends using something called a virtual machine. Now, I've I've heard that term thrown around, virtual machine, but to be honest, I'm not entirely sure I understand what it means. Sure, sure. Right. Think of it like this. A virtual machine is like having a separate computer, but inside your computer. So it allows you to run Kali Linux in this, this self-contained environment without it affecting your main operating system at all. Oh, okay. So it's like a like a safety net. So if something goes wrong in your virtual Kali Linux world, it, it won't affect the rest of your computer. Exactly. It's a fantastic way to, to learn, to experiment, to get comfortable with Kali Linux, but without the risk of messing up your main system. Think of it as like, um, like training wheels for ethical hacking. I like that. Okay. Training rules for ethical hacking. I like it. And then there's the live USB option we, we touched on earlier. The article mentions this is a good way to like test the waters with Kali Linux without a, a full installation. Yeah. And it's also incredibly convenient for um, for those on the go security assessments. Like, let's say you're working with a client who, you know, wants their network tested for vulnerabilities. Yeah. You can just boot up their computer from your Kali Linux USB drive and get to work. No need to install anything on their system or anything. It's like having um, it's like having a portable cybersecurity toolkit, but on a keychain. Right. So okay, so we've got options then. We've got options for for every level of of commitment. But before anyone runs off to you know download Kali Linux and start poking around, the article makes a, a really important point about oh, ethics. Yeah. And legal boundaries. Right, of course. With great power comes great responsibility. Right. You now that definitely applies to ethical hacking. It's like, uh, you know what they say, right? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Right. <laughs> Except in this case, it's more like, uh, don't use a digital crowbar when a delicate lock pick will do. Exactly. And definitely don't go breaking into systems that you don't have explicit permission to test. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's that's illegal, obviously. Yeah, to mention unethical. Right. Ethical hacking is about finding vulnerabilities so they can be fixed, not about causing harm or stealing data. Right, right. It's Ooh. like... um. It's like a doctor running tests to diagnose an illness. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to make you sicker. They're trying to understand the problem so they can help you get better. That's a good analogy. So no, like no digital joyriding in other people's systems, no matter how tempting it might be. Exactly. And if you do find a vulnerability while you're, you know, while you're conducting a responsible and legal security assessment, mm -hmm. you don't just like you don't just shout it from the rooftops, yeah. you know. The ethical approach is something called responsible disclosure. Yeah. So you inform the organization privately, give them a chance to fix the issue before someone else exploits it. So so you're not just like pointing out the problem and then like walking away. You're you're giving them a heads up so they can actually fix it before any real damage is done. Exactly. It's about making the digital world a safer place for everyone. I like it. Okay, that makes sense. Now, before we wrap up, I wanted to circle back to some of the other 
Uh, some of the other fascinating tools that the article mentioned, we, we've covered Nmap, Metasploit, John the Ripper. Right. But there is also uh, air cracking. And I don't know, anything with crack in the name just sounds kind of hardcore to me. Yeah, chuckles. Yeah, air cracking is, uh, well, it's all about Wi-Fi. You know, everyone always warns you about using public Wi-Fi. Don't tell me air cracking is the reason why. It's one of the reasons to be cautious, for sure. Air cracking is, it's like a master key for Wi-Fi. It allows you to see, you know, vulnerabilities that most people don't even know exist. Okay, so let's say, like, a coffee shop has a, a public Wi-Fi network. Right, right. An ethical hacker could, like, theoretically use air cracking to see if there are any security holes that someone could use to, like, I don't know, snoop on people's internet traffic or something. Exactly. And hopefully they would then advise the coffee shop on how to strengthen their Wi-Fi security so their customers aren't unknowingly vulnerable to attack. Right. Protect those lattes. Exactly. Okay. Good to know. Good reminders to be uh, be careful about what information you're sharing over public Wi-Fi, for sure. Okay. Um, another tool that caught my eye was was autopsy. And, and I don't know, it sounds a bit like something out of a... Like a crime drama or something. I know, right? <laughs> the name is a little dramatic. Autopsy is actually a uh, a digital forensics tool, yeah, which, yeah. you know, that's a whole fascinating field in itself. Right. But think of it like this. If a real-life crime scene had, like, a digital twin, okay. autopsy would be the tool that detectives use to, you know, to analyze the evidence. So instead of dusting for fingerprints, they're analyzing hard drives and, and recovering deleted files. and Exactly. <laughs> autopsy helps investigators understand what happened on a computer or a network after a security incident. Like, it can recover deleted files, piece together timelines, even identify the tools and techniques that were used in an attack. So it's not just about preventing attacks, it's also about, like, understanding them after the fact so we can, you know, so we can learn from them and strengthen our defenses for the future. Exactly. It's like having a, um, a digital security camera that not only records what happened, but also helps you understand, like, why it happened, how it happened. That's really wild. That's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. This has been a this has been a seriously eye-opening deep dive, I got to say. I agree. We've covered so much ground from, you know, what Kali Linux is and why it's so popular to the the powerful tools that it offers and of course the uh, you know, the crucial importance of of ethics in this field. Right. And and while not everyone needs to become, you know, an ethical hacking expert, mm -hmm. I think this deep dive just shows us why understanding the basics of cybersecurity is becoming more and more essential for well, for everyone. Absolutely. Whether you're running a business, managing a network, or or just browsing the web, being aware of, you know, the potential risks and how to protect yourself, it's it's more important now than ever, like you said. It really is. And the good news is you don't have to be a tech whiz to get started, right? Yeah. Just understanding the basics, like uh like using strong, unique passwords, being cautious on public Wi-Fi, staying informed about emerging threats. I mean, these small steps can go a long way in protecting yourself. It's like it's like learning how to how to lock your doors and windows. There you go. It's not about becoming a, a you know a security expert overnight. It's about taking those those small but important steps to protect yourself and and your valuable information. Could have said it better myself. Cybersecurity doesn't have to be intimidating. You know, it's really just about being aware, being proactive, and taking those, like you said, those small but significant steps to stay safe in our increasingly digital world. Well said. Well said. This has been an incredible deep dive into the world of ethical hacking and the uh, the power of Kali Linux. Big thanks to the uh, to the folks at Linux Journal for that insightful article. Repeat article. And to you, our listeners, for joining us on this journey. Thanks for having me. Until next time, stay curious, stay safe online, and uh, keep exploring. And remember, in the world of cybersecurity, knowledge is power.